Welcome back everyone. Last time we talked about some matrix properties and we talked about inverse matrices and we also talked about symmetric matrices and a few other basic identities. Um, in this video we're going to be talking about um, orthonormal matrices. So let's cover that. Let's say we have some matrix A and let's say this matrix A is comprised of um, a couple of column vectors. So this first vector of A is I'm going to call A1. The next column is going to be a vector which I'll call A2. And let's, let's make it three columns like this. Of course, we could go on if we wanted to. But let's say this is our A matrix. Now, how do we define an orthonormal matrix? Well, I'll write this down in a second. But in short, it's if the two norm of each of these individual vectors happens to be equal to 1 and if the dot product of all different combinations of them are equal to 0. In other words, the, the vectors um, that aren't themselves when dotted with each other are orthogonal. Now, if that's too much to handle, let me just uh, write it down step by step. So it's, this matrix A is ortho orthonormal if it satisfies the following. A1 transpose A1. This is also known as your uh, two-norm squared, which we'll be talking about, so about soon. If this is equal to 1, and if A2 transpose A2 is equal to 1, and if A3 transpose A3 is equal to 1. So this is one crucial element of an orthonormal matrix. Notice that the, um, the, when we dot each of these vectors with themselves, we get 1. That's one property. The other property is when we dot them with different combinations of them, we'll get 0. So in other words, A1 transpose A2 is equal to 0, and if a1 transpose A3 is equal to 0. And the other possible combination is uh, A2 transpose A3 is equal to 0. So this is a, a definition of an orthonormal matrix, where their dot products with themselves are equal to 1, but their dot products with anything else is equal to 0. Now, I'll be showing you some graphical intuition shortly, but let me first cover a few examples of um, orthonormal matrices. Let me write it here. Example one. Example one. A is equal to the identity matrix. That's a nice clear cut example. Now, let me prove to you that this is an orthonormal matrix just by following this property. Notice that the first column vector is 1, 0, and the second one is 0, 1. So let's, let's do this. This is going to be A1 transpose A1. What is that? Well, A1 is 1, 0, so that means this is going to be 0, 1 times by 1. Um, oh, sorry. I misspoke. I misspoke. A1 transpose A1 is going to be equal to, well, A1 is 1, 0, so that means this is going to be 1, 0 like this. And then A1 is just going to be 1, 0, like this. And if you do the matrix multiplication, that's 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0, which is indeed 1, which satisfies this first condition here. The other condition is that A2 transpose A2 better equal to 1. So let's see what happens. A2 is 0, 1. So let's write this as 0, 1 times by 0, 1. And if we do the matrix multiplication, that's going to be 0 times 0 plus 1 times by 1, which is 1. Hey, it works. Now let's see if all the um, uh, uh, other combinations are 0. So there's only one other combination. It's A1 transpose A2. And what's that? That's going to be uh, 1, 0 times by 0, 1. And if we do that multiplication, it's 1 times by 0 plus 0 times by 1, which is indeed 0. So indeed, all these properties are held. And this is therefore an orthonormal or orthogonal uh, matrix here. I'll cover one other example. I might not uh, spell it out as clearly as I did, but let me just show you an example. Example 2. I'll also make it a 2 by 2 square matrix. Let's say that we had A, which was um, 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.866 and 0 0.866 here and 0 0.5. Now, I won't rigorously prove it like I've done here, but this is another example of an orthonormal or so orthogonal matrix. Now, let's see if I can cover some um, visual intuition as to what an orthogonal matrix is. If I were to draw 
let's say, um, each of these column vectors on an axis like this, then this first um, uh, vector here will actually look like this. It will be 1, 0, so it will be this vector here. That will be our first vector, which is 1, 0. It's the unit vector in the x direction, actually. And the second one is 0, 1, which will look like this. That's going to be 0, 1. That's that vector. And what's interesting is you can tell that these two vectors are actually 90 degrees to each other. This is no coincidence. This is a property of, um, um, of an orthonormal matrix. And in short, that really comes from this property here. It turns, it turns out when the dot product is equal to 0, then these two vectors are 90 degrees to each other. Or the proper way to put it is they're orthogonal. Let's see if this is also true with this one. If I were to draw um, uh, each of these column vectors on this plot here, then the first one is 0 0.5, 0 0.866, so it's angled upwards a little bit like that. And the second one is minus 0 0.866, so a little bit more left, and something which looks a bit more like that. And notice that this is also 90 degrees to each other. That is also um, a visual way of understanding this uh, orthonormal matrix. And what's interesting is that the length of each of these arrows happens to be precisely equal to 1. So the length of this one will be equal to 1, and the length of this one will be equal to 1. And that's satisfied by this condition here. So hopefully this is a visual idea of understanding what um, an orthonormal or orthogonal matrix is. Now why do I bring all of this up? Well, it turns out there's one really powerful property. In fact, there's many powerful properties of um, orthonormal matrices. But one really powerful one, the main one in my view, is that A transpose is equal to A inverse. That's a powerful one. And in order for this to be true, I should just clarify that A must be, must be orthonormal, orthonormal, and A must be square. There we go. Um, notice I've got an inverse here, and so you might say, well, doesn't A need to be invertible too? Turns out orthonormal matrices will always be invertible because their determinants can never be zero. Um, but yeah, this is, a, this is a property of orthonormal matrices. I hope that made sense. Next video, I'm going to be talking about norms now that I've started to justify it with these types of dot products. So we'll see you then.